let's continue looking at some non-deterministic machines and thinking about their behavior and how we can build them, emulate them, put them together with other machines. So I've sort of presented implicitly three different ways of thinking about how a, a non-deterministic machine proceeds. You can either say you make a guess, and if you can guess super lucky, you can get there. This is also sometimes called an oracle. If you could consult an oracle whenever there's a choice and the oracle will give you a, a good answer, yeah, then that might say something. So that's the, you know, you, you guess in a lucky way. Uh, you could also just sort of say, hey, I'm going to execute all possible operations in parallel. When I come to a choice, I'm going to fork off the process and have one process take the first branch and another process take the second or third or fourth branch. Um, and again, that's a little bit like the uh, the fingers are each one parallel thread in that model where I have my fingers in different states and each finger goes to more and I might have to fork off my fingers into several fingers. Um, some fingers just die if there's no transitions for them. Um, and you can also view this as a tree. Uh, and this is a general search property, right? Whenever you're searching through a st uh, big state space and you make a choice, you might try that choice and see what happens. And if it doesn't work out, you backtrack and try a different choice. So you go back to your last branch point and try a different choice. That's backtracking. Um, what sort of algorithm uses? What's the classic name for the backtracking algorithm? Depth first search in a graph. Um, okay, so yeah, you could go ahead and you can think of doing a depth first search. In fact, that's when I first presented this machine on the slide here. Uh, I, I tried, I tried B going to the right and then A going down were my first two choices. Uh, and then I tried B going to the right and A looping and see where that led, it didn't help either. But finally B going down, it turned out, did lead to success that time. So we're at least a, a branch with, a, a tree with at least three different leaves on it. Um, more technically, you could say, hey, we have, again, a computation is a state and the remaining input. Uh, and you can say, hey, from this configuration here, I can get to these following configurations. These are the legal follow-up configurations. That makes a tree. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, what are non-deterministic machines good for? What, what problems can we solve with them? Um, so we'll see some here, pattern matching, optional substrings, multiple sub, taking the union of sublanguages, we've hinted at that already, and uh, pattern matching with both multiple keywords and uh, checking for the end of a string. So, hey, I want all strings, look at this top definition for a second, pause and make sure you understand that definition. Hey, it's the set of all strings containing A, B, C, A, B, B, as a substring in the middle of it somewhere possibly at the beginning if x was the empty string, uh, because x is in you know, ABC star, that includes the empty string. Um, okay, great. Uh, could you build a deterministic machine for this? Yeah. Is it a bit ugly? Yeah, you have to think at each point like, okay, I've seen A, B, C, A, B, and I see another B, how far do I backtrack? And, and have to worry about all that. Okay, so you could build it, but it's a little bit of pain because of the deciding how far to backtrack. Uh, Non-deterministic, I can write the same machine, so it's not something I couldn't do before, but I can sure do it a lot more easily. Uh, just keep reading A's, B's, C's until you magically guess where the uh, substring is. Oh dear. Huh, I guess you, <laughs> I'll make it so you can see me. Um, magically guess where the substring is, and then just read that substring, and then go and read the rest of the thing. If it contains that substring, there's gonna be some way through this that accepts. Some choice of when to go between here and here. Uh, and if it does not contain that substring, you'll never get to the accept state. So yeah, that's a valid finite state machine. Um, me, ah, make myself smaller, and fit off in the corner here. Okay, um, how about, hey, I have an optional thing that I want to occur in the string. So I, I have an optional A followed by a couple A's, followed by zero or more B's. Uh, yeah, the epsilon makes optional super easy. Yeah, an optional, I get from Q0 to Q1, I either read the A or I don't. 
um, followed by two A's, followed by zero or more B's. Okay, so that's nearly deterministic, but we have that epsilon that's going on there. Could you write this with a totally deterministic machine not using epsilon? Yeah, you'd have to figure out how, but it's not too hard. You have maybe one extra state going on, I'm not sure. Um, okay, how about uh, W is either this string here or it is even length? Well, I can write a mis machine for even length, that's pretty easy. I can write a machine for contain is the string ABA exactly. And then I can again use this trick we saw before to take the union of two languages. It's kind of like the or of two different conditions. Uh, yeah, for my start state, either guess which one I'm going to, guess what my input is going to follow. And I'll just say, hey, go to either one of these two epsilon things. So a pair of epsilon choices is a great way to say or. Okay. Hey, remember that missing letter sublanguage of A, B, C, D, and one letter has to be missing, and we decided there were two to the four states in that. It was this big, huge tree. Uh, it turns out that can be done much more uh, concisely using epsilon transitions. And here it is. I'm going to start in Q0. I'm going to magically guess which letter doesn't appear, take an epsilon transition to that, and keep looping as long as I see an A, B, or D, say, uh, and end up in accepts. If I went to here and saw a C, then yeah, I'd have no tra transition. I couldn't make that loop, I would fall off because there was nowhere to go. As long as there's some way to make this transition, I will accept. So you can see that if you contain all four letters, then yeah, if it contained, if it did contain a C, then you better not take this one. If it did contain a B, you better not take this one. If it did contain an A, you better not take this one, and so on. Um, this not A, not B, those, that's just the name of the state. That's not, um, it's the descriptive name of the state. It's nothing formal. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, multiple keywords. We already saw this, sort of a, an or. Um, here's one example. It's been simplified a little bit. I would prefer if it had one row that corresponded to A, B, B, A, A, uh, and another one that was included, uh, some state that went from B to Q6, or went to Q6 on the B followed by A, B, A. Um, and then join those again with two epsilon transitions. You could probably collapse those epsilon transitions a little bit if you wanted. So, okay, how about this? Think about this, pause and see if you can get a machine that checks is the fourth to last character an A? And uh, it turns out, yeah, pretty easy to do. Just again, use this tri trick of looping until you're at the fourth, you know, magically guess if you're at the fourth of the last letter, and then guess A, and then otherwise read more three letters and get to an accept state. Um, could you do this with a deterministic machine? Yeah, but you're gonna have to be a little bit more careful. You have to sort of, every state's gonna correspond to the last four letter, the most recent four letters you've seen. Uh, and so that's going to be like 16 states going on there uh, and pretty involved transitions between them. So try writing it out if, you, if you're not quite sure. But, uh, so again, this is something we could do with a deterministic machine, but it's much, much easier with non-determinism. Huh, interesting. So far, we haven't actually shown an example of something you couldn't do with a deterministic machine. We've shown things that are easier once I add non-determinism but nothing I couldn't do before. Okay, we're gonna see that there ain't nothing you can't do before. Adding non-determinism might let you do some things faster, but it's not give you any more power. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so more pattern matching here. A set of strings where, that are the binary encoding of a positive integer that is divisible by 16 or is odd. What's the binary encoding of a, an odd number? Last bit is one. We sort of saw how to do that. Uh, divisible by 16, what does that mean? That means the last four bits are one, zero, 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 or just the last four bits are zero, 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 I believe. Because um, the last four bits are the remainder mod 16. Yeah, we could go ahead and uh, uh, do that. It's not shown here. I'll let you think about doing that. Come ask on the discussion board if, if it's not... Uh, if you're not sure how to do it, or come by office hours. 
And do, 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 keep that window on top. Okay, uh, a couple more. Um, the set of all strings that contain AA, the set of all strings that contain BB. And then we can look at the union of those. And again, this is like, like I showed before, uh, make the machine for M1, make the machine for M2, make a machine now, a non-deterministic machine that has an epsilon transition, either epsilon transitions to M1 or the start state of M1 or to the start state of M2. So includes those two smaller machines together to make a bigger machine. Um, Remember the complement trick? To complement the set of strings that we accept, we simply swap all accept and non-accept states. Okay. Um, yeah, so duh, 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 look at, and again, we can look at uh, this language L1 and L2 that were strings ending in A or beginning with A. And we want, and we came up with a machine for that. You can think about um, the complement of start with A and end with B is either uh, so start, start or end with A, that's the complement of start and end with B. And you could write a deterministic machine for that. Uh, but could you use our non-deterministic machine we wrote for that and swap all the accept and non-accept states and go back and look at it? No, that does not work. There's this asymmetry in the definition of if any one path accepts, then it will accept. Uh, and we're, that doesn't allow itself to negation so easily. And so complementing a non-deterministic machine is harder. Uh, what are we gonna do? We're gonna convert the non, we're gonna find out how to convert a non-deterministic machine to a deterministic one. And then we could complement that one. It might be much bigger than our original one, but can be done. Okay. Um, okay. So just reviewing, uh, non-deterministic machines allow epsilon transitions, allow zero or two or more or one transition on an alphabet symbol. Um, so just that's again, relaxing a function to a relation is the second two bullets. The transitions on epsilon is not, that's a little bit more than just relaxing to a, from a transition function to a transition relation. And to do that, we needed to change the definition of what it meant to accept we accept if there exists a path that would accept, okay? Uh, computations that die are ignored, and if all computations die, uh, then we, or end in a, do finish, but enter in a non-accept statement, then we reject, okay? And to put it a little bit differently, um, determinants, you have exactly one choice. Every transition consumes exactly one input symbol, um, and an input string completely determines how the machine runs, okay? Uh, Non-deterministic machine, you have many choices at each step. Transition might be an epsilon transition that consumes zero, zero input symbols, um, and one input string can determine many, many computation paths, perhaps, and we accept if any of them are done. Okay, so those are, you know, if I ask you to do one or another on a homework or an exam, be, be sure you do, <laughs> I'm sure you're clear, are you doing a deterministic or a non-deterministic machine? But, and the next lecture will be going ahead and starting with uh, showing that, uh, oh, so we'll, we'll do some formal de definitions in the next video. That will be short. And then we're gonna go to a proof that non-deterministic machines are equivalent, for every non-deterministic machine, there is an equivalent deterministic machine. And to make that a proof, we're going to need the formal definitions that begin about configuration and paths and all that um, that we talked about for deterministic machines. I'll see you then. I was going to film our video topic lecture on non-deterministic finite state machines here outside with the big, huge torch thingy in the background. Uh, but it's actually kind of windy and kind of chilly as well. Uh, and of course, there's what my son insists is the giant kaiju egg right there. Okay, so that's why I recorded it inside after all.